we have left off last week looking at the book of Daniel. And we're I'm focusing this entire year, as I have repeatedly say, on end time events, and have begun by looking on the preparation for end time events. It doesn't do us any good to know all the events and their sequence and their order unless we are prepared for those events and those sequences. And so we're preparing for the second coming, and you open your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verses 1. There the Bible says, But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Remember, For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, both serves, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying his power. Having some kind of form of religion, some kind of and a form of Christianity by denying really the power of God. Power of God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as we continue to study this book of Daniel, I ask that you take away any distraction from what you have to tell us today. Speak through your Holy Spirit into every single heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So here, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, what kind of times will come? Perilous. Perilous times will come. Dangerous times will come. Dangerous times will come. Since you are living in this type of dangerous times, dangerous, and, and all those descriptions in 2 Timothy 3, 1-5, we already see them. And we have been seeing them even when I was a child. But now even more. Now even more. And so we are living in this type of world. We need to have a solid root. Our solid roots in Christ. We have unmovable. And we spoke about this last week when we looked at Daniel chapter 1. At those Hebrew boys that were not budged what they believed. They believe what God said there. The message last week on Daniel 1 really, really wasn't so much a, a message on diet, but it was so much more on standing for the principles of God. And as Seventh-day Adventists, we have principles of God. We are different. We are not like the world. We are not like others. And no matter where you are, guys, stand for the principles of God as the that's and we look at those, those young men, that although they were captives in a foreign land, strangers in a strange land, they still do not budge their beliefs. They still do not budge their beliefs. Because people will be unreliable. People will be unre unreliable. People will be religious, but not spiritual. In church, but not converted will be Christians but lacking Christ in their heart. And we live in this stressful world with emotional stress and pressure. And if you open and join me there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, in this stressful world, in this stressful world with pressure, not just from outside, but even from within, even from within. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, brethren, concerning, verse 1, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's talking about the second coming, last day events. And our gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble, either by spirit or by the word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Don't be shaken up. Be careful. Verse 3 says, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will 
will not come unless the falling away comes first. There will be a falling away. The person sitting next to you may one day not come to church anymore and not ever come. The pastor who you maybe have looked it up, looked up to so long may leave the ministry or Christianity and all together. There will, be, there, there will be a falling away from the GC, from the unions, from the conference, from the churches, even from schools. And here, the Bible tells us, it's telling us, don't be shaken up. Don't be shaken up. The pressures in the last day will be so great that it will reveal really what you're made of. It will reveal really what you really believe. Where your faith is, if you really have a relationship with Christ. If you live through these hard times of pressure and get saved, if you live through these end days and get saved, friends, you will have lived to endure. Jesus wasn't joking there when he said in Matthew 24, 13, he who endures to the end shall be saved. Endure what? Endure what? Persecution, hard times, pressures. You have to endure. Stick it out. He says, if you can endure, even though you may see your fellow church members leaving, or maybe the pastor who baptized you, you got to endure to the end. He who endures to the end shall be saved. So one of the things that God gave us, one of the things that God gave us to help us endure to the end is prophecy. It's prophecy. The ability to foresee the future, to see ahead and know how it's going to end. Thank God that we know how this whole great controversy is going to end. Amen. God is telling us that he's going to win and the devil is going to lose. Amen. Amen. One day the devil is going to burn in the lake of fire and there will be no more sin ever again. Thank God. We know how this book ends. We know how it's going to end. God has given us that new prophet. When we study, we started looking at the book of Daniel, chapter 1, and now we're going to look at chapter 2. Look at Daniel. So if you want to open your Bible there with me to Daniel chapter 2, and God is telling us in these hard times, in these last days, in these last days, He is telling you and He is telling me, it's going to be okay. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, how it's going to end, because I am in control. God is in control. So there in Daniel chapter 2, there, Daniel chapter 2, the Seventh-day Adventist, should be a no-brainer chapter. Amen. Amen. If you are a Seventh-day Adventist, five years or more, Daniel chapter 2, you should know what you should be able to share with others. It is, it is part of our heritage, Daniel chapter 2. It is part of our heritage. And God there speaking a dream, giving King Nebuchadnezzar to reign Babylon. A dream. And there you have that dream in your bulletin, in the meditation area, in the back. It's a figure that he dreamt. But he didn't remember. He did remember. And this dream bothered him. This dream bothered him. If you never read chapter 2 of Daniel, I invite you to read it when they go home today. And so this dream bothered him and he called his wise men and his, and his astrologers. And among that group was Daniel. But he didn't call it Daniel. You see, Daniel was a captain. And so he first wanted to try his own wise men. And so they couldn't tell him what the dream was. It, the wise man, on the contrary, said, tell us what the dream is and we'll tell you what it means. But Nebuchadnezzar said, no, 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 tell me what I dream. If you're really wise, man, if you can really speak to the other spirit, then tell me what it is. And they couldn't do it. And Nebuchadnezzar gets upset. What does he do? He causes all the wise men to get killed. All of them. And Daniel's among that group. And when, and when the news comes to Daniel, he says, what is upsetting the king? And they tell him what it is and he tells the king, give us time, and God will give us a dream. So there in Daniel chapter 2, verse 17, Daniel chapter 2, verse 17, 
Then Daniel went to his house and made a decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his command, and his companions. These are Daniel, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That they might seek mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret. So that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men. And so there Daniel and his friends have a prayer meeting. A literal prayer on your knees with God. Amen. Prayer meeting there with the Lord. And did, did God respond? Yes. Sure did. Yes. He gave them the dream. See, prayer, friend, prayer relieves the pressure. The pressures of your life, the struggles of stress, of work, of children, of friends, of the heart. Prayer relieves the pressure. Jesus says, take my guilt, for it is light. He doesn't say it is gone, but it's light. It's light. Prayer relieves the pressure. So there in Daniel chapter 2, if you look at verse 19, it says, Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. They had their prayer meetings, and then they went back to bed. And God answered in a night vision the dream. Prayer relieves the pressure that you may have. And there you can see the dream that he gave. And he explains the dream. As you saw there, O king, a big statue with a head of gold, the chest and arms of silver, belly of thighs and bronze, legs of iron, feet of iron and clay mixed together, and a big rock carved out of no hand struck the rock and broke the statue into pieces. And so he explains then the dream. But what I like there in Daniel 2.36, is that after he gives him the dream, he says, this is a dream. You see, when God has given you the answer, it's not, well, is that it? Did I guess your dream right? Please say yes, and you're crossing your fingers behind your back. No, Daniel said, that's the dream. That is the dream. And he gives an interpretation there in, from verse 38. From verse 38, he says, and, where, and wherever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the fields and the birds of heaven, he has given them into your hands and has made you ruler over all of them. You are this head of gold. And so there again he begins to interpret the dream that this head of gold is King Nebuchadnezzar, which represents the kingdom of Babylon. But notice, Daniel is faithful to the interpretation, but after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another, a third of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, inasmuch as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything, and like iron that crushes that kingdom shall break in pieces and crush all other kingdoms. For as you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter and clay, and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay. And as the toes of the feet, verse 42, were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seeds of men, but they will not important, they will not adhere, join to one another, just as iron does not mix with clay. And there he gives interpretation. He gives interpretation of the dream and explains it to him. And God is telling Daniel the future. Now, now the dream isn't so much today's sermon. That's just a prop to where we are going. But there we know, if, if, if you study and read spend time in history, that many have tried to unite Europe. Many have tried to unite Europe. Charlemagne of France tried to <coughs> pray. 
Charles V of Spain tried and failed. Napoleon, Hitler, and even the European common market tried to unite and have failed. What's interesting, friends, is if you study history and, and I really appreciate Dr. Jones there, our, our, our history professor at Southwestern, if you study history, you notice that Hitler made the same mistake that Napoleon did in trying to conquer Europe. You would figure that, you know, you would study how others have failed and not do those same mistakes. But if God said, we ain't going to join together. If God said, they ain't going to join together, they ain't going to join together. <laughs> Whenever Hitler tried to maybe almost be successful in joining his monarch, his kingdom, God says, it's time for just a little confusion here. And they did not join together. Praise God for his word that can be trusted. Amen. For his word that can be true. Mm -hmm. Daniel 2, 44. Daniel 2, verse 44. We are living right now in the days of the feast, where, you, where Europe is invited. That's where we are living. Mm -hmm. Then verse 44 says, And in the days of these kings, the, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Amen. God is bringing his kingdom here. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. He is bringing his second coming. Is the next event, friends, to happen in this world, according to prophecy. According to prophecy. Now we're getting to the means of today. See, the, the dream was given to Nebuchadnezzar, but it was revealed to the church. It was given to Nebuchadnezzar, but it was revealed to Daniel. It wasn't revealed to the wise ones of Nebuchadnezzar. It wasn't revealed to Nebuchadnezzar. It was revealed to Daniel, to the church. Bible prophecy is about the world for the church. Bible prophecy is God letting the church know this is what's going to happen in the world. So you know. So you be prepared. You're my people. I'll tell you what's going to happen in advance. God is giving us prophecy. Bible prophecy is about world events, but for the church. So why did Daniel and his friends need this information? Okay, join me there in Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25. Why did Daniel and his friends need this? Here Daniel says, Wow, thank you so much. Notice there, see, Daniel and his friends were Bible students. They were Bible students. There it says, Jeremiah is writing, he said, The word came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of <coughs> Judea in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, which was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Don't miss that. Which Jeremiah the prophet spoke to all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even to this day, this is the thirteenth year in which the word of the Lord has been, has come to me, and I have spoken to you, rising early and speaking, but you have not listened. Jeremiah is preaching and preaching to the people. But are they listening? No. Verse 4, And the Lord has sent to you all his servants the prophets, rising early and sending them, but you have not listened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Repent now everyone of his evil ways and his evil doing, and dwell in the land that the Lord has given to you and your fathers forever. <coughs> Do not go after other gods to serve them with the words of your hands, and I will not harm you. Yet, you have not listened to me, says the Lord, that you, may, that you might provoke me to anger with the words of your hands to your own hurt. Don't miss that. To your own hurt. Every time you disobey God, every time you do your will instead of His will, it's to your own hurt. And God is wanting to save.
save you from your own hurt. Amen. It's not that God closed these roles to make our lives boring. It's for your benefit. It's for your good. Otherwise, you'll hurt yourself. It's against your own hurt. Verse 8. Therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, because you have not heard my word, behold, I will send and take all the famines of the north, said the Lord. And who will come? Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land, against its inhabitants, and against these nations all around with utter, utterly, will utterly destroy them and make them an, an astonishment, a hissing, and perpetual desolation. Notice verse 11. And this whole land shall be a desolation and a, and an astonishment to these nations shall serve the king of Babylon for how long? Seventy years. For seventy years. For seventy years. Daniel knew, <coughs> Daniel knew that they were going to be in Babylon for seventy years. For seventy years. They knew that chances are them going home to zero. They entered Babylon as young men, not as babies, as young men. Plus 70 years would probably be too old to go back home. Too old to go back home. So here, Daniel and his friends would probably die in Babylon. None of them would ever leave it alive. Go back home. Go back to the temple. Go back to their mother. Go back to their friends. They will probably die there in Bethlehem. Both Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Nazareth. Listen, church. This is the main point. Some of us here are in Bethlehem. And some of us might die in Bethlehem. Some of us that are single may never get married. Some of us are overweight and never lose it. Some of us that are poor will never get rich. Some of us that don't have a degree will never reach and get it. Some of us that are sick, whatever disease it is, cancer, may never get you. You may never get you. Some of us in Babylon are going to die in Babylon. People who are going to die in Babylon need to know that God is still in control. They need to know that God is still in control. You see, the dream for Daniel wasn't so much of the events. He knew that he was going to be there for 70 years. And God is reminding Daniel, don't worry, Daniel. Babylon is not how it's going to last. Babylon isn't going to rule the world forever. And then come another king and another king until my kingdom will come. Amen. So my kingdom will come. Amen. These are tough times that we are living. And the Bible says that one day, right, one day there will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more death, no more issues. Whatever struggles you are going through right now, Whatever heartaches or pressure you are going or your folks are going, God is reminding us it ain't going to be like this forever. Amen. It is not going to be like this forever. The purpose of the prophecy is to let the church see beyond its problems. Beyond its problems. Now, too many are judging God by their present situation. Too many are judging God by their present right now situation and are missing the point that God is still in control. And, it is, and that it is not always going to be as their present situation is. It is not always going to be. You are not always going to work less. You are not always going to have human problems. You are not always going to have that knee ache. You are not always going to have marital problems. One day, friends, all that will end. Amen. One day, God is promising through prophecies 
here in Daniel. Although you know, son, you're going to be in Babylon 70 years, you might die there. Never go back home. Never go back and worship in that temple you enjoy. Never go back with your friends. Maybe he had university friends. But one day, Daniel, my kingdom will come. My kingdom will come. It doesn't make a difference how your present circumstances end. This is not your end if you are tied with Jesus. This is not your end if you are tied with Jesus. And that's why in Daniel 12, verse 13, this, this is why God tells Daniel, the last chapter and the last verse. 12, verse 13. But you, talking about Daniel, go your way to the end. Go your way to the end. For you shall rest and will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. At the end of the days, you will rise to your inheritance. You are going to rest now, but at the end, you will stand. You can't change prophecy. You can't change it. But you can change your response to prophecy. You can change your response to prophecy. This is why Jesus in Matthew 24, 44 says, Therefore you also be ready. For you don't know when the Son of Man is going to come. At a time when you do not expect. You also be ready. So if you can't change prophecy, the least you can do is change your life. Amen. And be ready. And be ready. Daniel lived a faithful life because he had seen the end. He saw how it was going to end. And he decided to live faithful. Because he knew that at the end, he would stand. He would stand in the kingdom of God. For some of us, our troubles will not change. Our troubles will not change. And too many are losing hope. Are losing their faith in friends. Their faith in churches. Their faith in conferences, their faith in administration, friends, that may not change. And we can do all our best to try to promote change and vote for the right people, friends. We can do all that, but God is still in the room. God is still in the God is still in the This world is not going to get any better. Healthcare is not going to improve. The wars are not going to end. We can still vote for all those, and we should participate in voting in your choice of parties, that's fine. But know this, God is still behind the wheel. Control. When Pilate told Jesus, don't you know who I am? I can set you free. What did Jesus say? You're only there because my father put you there. God is still in control. God is still in control. But friends, don't lose faith. The purpose of the dream is to make sure that the church understands that. That God is still in control. Hang on to Jesus. Trust in His Word. And take your stand for Him. This is why Hebrews 10, 37 says, He who is coming will come and will not tarry. Will not tarry. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 1 Thessalonians 4.13 This is a common verse for some of the evidence. There... It is God's promise that we will see Him one day face to face. Verse 13, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. This is sorrow that those who and others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do you believe that? Yeah. Even so, God will bring with Him those who sleep in Jesus. For the day, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means receive those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven and with a shout, the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. Now these trumpets were great. Amen. Amen. But can you imagine the trumpets of God? <laughs> they will wake up the dead. And the dead is right the right word. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Amen. One day we will see the 
the Lord face to face. Amen. One day, those that we have buried, we're going to see again. <laughs> Daniel is going to raise up and see again his mom. See again his friend. See Jerusalem another time. One day, we will see it. And that's why, in terms of to James, God tells us to be patient and hang in there. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Verse 1. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corro corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasures in the last days, indeed the wages of the laborers who mow your field, which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of, of, of Sabbath. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have, you have fasted your heart as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and have murdered the just. He does not resist. You have been cheated, wrong, done wrong. Here, verse 7. Therefore, be patient, brethren. Be patient until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruits of the earth? Wait patiently for it until it receives the early and later. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Amen. Is at hand. <coughs> Do not grumble against one another. Amen. Amen. We got no time to be arguing. We already talked about that two weeks ago. Do not grumble against one another, brethren. Least you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Yes. We're studying right now the prophet of Daniel. Did he have to be patient and yes. with suffering? Let's take that as an example. Let's take that as an example. To be patient. To wait it out. One day it's gonna get better. I have I have an uncle that whenever somebody does him wrong or treats him wrong, or even among the family, even among the family, if he gets the, you know, they're splitting up the cake maybe, and he gets the little smallest piece, he he always says, one day, one day, implying one day. Everything will be done right. One day, everything will be done right. King Nebuchadnezzar thought, friends, that he was in control. But uh -huh. God was in control. King Nebuchadnezzar thought that his kingdom would last forever and made that whole statue of gold. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that story. What, that, what we can learn in preparation for the last day. God will not, friends, let go. He's got the whole world in his hand. You know this. Now remember, friends, the dream was given, to, was given to Nebuchadnezzar, but it was revealed for us, for the church, for the church, that he is in control. So remember three things. Daniel, don't limit God by your short-term circumstances. Don't limit God by your short -term this is just a short time. A short time. Eternity with God is forever. Don't limit God by your short term. No matter how bad it is, it does not change God's intention for our eternity. It, no matter how bad it is, friends, God still wants you to be saved. The believer must always view their present life through the glasses of God's future intention. You, there, you, your present life through God's future intention. And God's future intention is for you and I to see in the kingdom of God. So Daniel, two 
2.45. Daniel 2.45. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of a mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces and iron, bronze and clay and gold and wood, and the great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. It ends with the dream is certain and his interpretation you can count on. I'm sure Daniel maybe he didn't express it in front of the king, but inside he was smiling from ear to ear. You ain't gonna rain for her and everything else. My God will put an end to this. And although I may die in these 70 years here in this kingdom, here in a strange land that's not my home, I will be faithful. I will wait it out. I will be faithful all along because I know the end. In the end, there's the last verse. I will stand to my inheritance. I will stand to my inheritance. Friends, this is no time. This is no time to be leaving the church. <clears throat> no time to be questioning Christianity, to be questioning the Bible, to be questioning the church, friends. This is a time to be more grounded and rooted in God. In God. I don't know what kind of week you have. I don't know what kind of week. I know what kind of week some of you have, but not all of you. But nothing can change my faithfulness. Nothing can change my faithfulness because I know that God is in control. I know that God is in control. I can have the worst week, but yet God is still in control. God is still in control. That's why He tells us. Again in Matthew 24, he who endures to the end, he who waits it out, he who sticks it out, he who endures to the end shall be saved. She who endures to the end shall be saved. Shall be saved. Will you endure to the end, friends? Amen. Will you stick it out to the end? How about you guys? And endure. You want to be saved? You want to go to heaven? Amen. Endure to the end. Hard time, hard time. They kill the collectors. Are asking about your loans. <laughs> <laughs> but know this: God is in control. He owns the gold, the silver, and the cattle. Okay. Everything belongs to Him. There is nothing impossible. So I just appeal to you, church, in our preparation for Jesus' second coming. God has given us the end already. So we got no worries. Why? Because we know that if we stand with God, we will stand like Daniel in the end, in our inheritance. My prayer for you is that you commit like Daniel, purpose in his heart, like we said it last week, purpose in his heart. Stand firm against the, against anything. To stand firm with God. To stand firm with God. God bless you. May you always, always, always remember to have that special relationship and time with Him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, my God, oh my God, we live in a time where there are pressure and problems and stresses that sometimes can discourage us. But Daniel, you sent him and his friends a reassuring that although they were going to be there for 70 years, you are still the initial. And although we may be living in this world, we don't know how long, but with all the problems that may come in our lives, whether it's the sickness, and you will take us home to be with you. So help us to be faithful. Help us to be faithful to endure to the end so that we may stand with you. Thank you, Father. Please bless your church, not just here in Cleveland, but your church around the world, especially this year. We get together and send In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.